At a very young age, I discovered that there are only two things that matter at any given moment. What you believe about yourself and what you believe about the world you live in. That's it. These are the two conditions to unconditional happiness. Maybe to say it a little bit more clearly, it's the degree to which you believe, one, you are good and have the power to create the life you want to live, and two, the universe is good and is supportive. As a thought in your mind, it would probably sound something like the following. I am good. I can create the life that I want to live. The universe is good. And the universe will support me in creating that life. I spent the last decade and a half studying Torah, a fusion of philosophy, psychology, and theology, personal development, ethics, and metaphysics. And from everything that I've learned, it's all helped me to develop this understanding of life. And what I want to share with you today are four personal stories that highlight these two conditions, and by the end give you a tool that is life-changing, four questions you can ask yourself today to help change your tomorrow. I was just 18 when I got the call. I was kicked out of high school. My sin? Rock and roll. Okay, Probably doesn't look like that right now. But that was my life. I was in a religious high school, and being in a pop-punk band was not such a good match. They gave me a choice, music or graduate. Well, the questions I kept getting were, how are you going to make it through life without finishing school? What are people going to think about you? Maybe I was young and dumb, but what it was was a deep belief in myself and my own ability, and in a universe that would support me in my dreams. So I made the difficult decision, and I left school, but I was happy. I was discovering myself, and I knew only good can come from this. See, most people live with a perspective that you need to be somewhere with someone or do something to really feel good about themselves and their life, to really be happy. But the truth is, that's a problem. That makes happiness totally conditional. But there is another way. There's a way to live with unconditional happiness. And that all begins with what we believe. See, what we believe is the lens through which we see the world. It's how we interpret everything. Everything. It shapes the way we think and feel. It determines how we act and react to life, how you see will absolutely determine your level of happiness. There's a lens you can look at the world with where you see yourself and the world you live in as good and powerful. And it's that lens that starts making your joy and your peace free of any conditions. So, I met a guy in a coffee shop, and he tells me, I can get you and your band a gig at a Grammy's after party. And I get so excited, and he says, all I need from you is $400. Well, from the laughter, I can tell that you know something about something, because if you know anything about anything, you know I was getting scammed. <laughs> but as a hungry 18-year-old alone and trying to get discovered, and something inside says, this could be your opportunity. You put your lunch money together and you make it happen. And when we showed up, it wasn't Beverly Hills. And when we walked in the door, we saw a guy sitting in his boxers, watching the Grammys with his mom. And the band looked at me like, you know, this is all your fault. And it's this big feeling of, oh my God, what have we done? He invited us to bring all our gear into the back of the house. 
And the band was ready to leave right away. But I said, why don't we just stick around? First of all, I don't want to lose $400. And second of all, this could be a glorified band practice. Something good must come from this. This couldn't be an accident. Like, what are we doing here? This is insane. Well, we set up our stuff. And about a half hour later, there they were. Three distinguished individuals walked into the room wearing fancy clothes, their Grammy passes still hanging from their necks, looking just as frustrated as we were when we walked in the door, recognizing they too just got scammed into coming to a Grammy after party. The difference was they were at the Grammys. We got to perform for them later that night, and turns out they were the CEO and president of a record label that signed us just three weeks later. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I, I chose to stay at that party. And that's what made all the difference. And what allowed me to do that was that I wasn't walking around believing in accidents. There were no mistakes in the universe. And I was looking for hidden opportunities wherever they could be found. When you're the one looking for silver linings, you'll be the one that finds them. When you're open to meaningful coincidences, opportunities will present themselves to you all the time. And maybe you'll say, I was lucky. I don't believe that. It's not that some people are lucky. It's that some people are looking. I was walking with my daughter just last week, and we saw, I saw a two-shekel coin on the floor, and I didn't say anything to her. I wanted to see if she'd notice when she walked over it, and she didn't. When I told her, hey, look back at where you just stepped over, and she saw the coin there, she said, wow, Abba, how did you see that? I said, honey, it's easy. I was looking. This is the central idea. How you see is what you get. It's not that you'll believe it when you see it. It's you'll see it when you believe it. It's not that some people are lucky. It's just some people are looking. So let's fast forward a few years. We're signed to the record label. We're on tour with some of our favorite bands. Our songs are on radio and MTV, and life is great. And I get put at another fork in the road. Despite living the dream, I had a powerful realization. I didn't want to be in the band anymore. I decided and felt I wanted to live a life that had a normal family life, that wasn't on the road six to ten months out of the year. I wanted inner success as much as outer success, and I wanted to live a meaningful life. I knew that there must be more. But the idea of walking away from the band was insane. I had just spent my entire life invested in this one place. Time, energy, money, effort, it was everything. To walk away from that is to walk away from my entire life. Everything I ever knew, my entire family of friends. And yet, my heart was calling me elsewhere. What allowed me to make that decision was the belief in myself that I was worth it if it were important for me to walk away. And in a universe that would support me not just in my present, but in my future. The next 13 years, I studied. I devoted myself to a practice of meditation and prayer, and I found my inner voice. I also found my new vision. I wanted to share these life-changing truths, these deep, spiritual, profound ideas with the world so we could all live better and more evolved lives. It all seemed to make sense to me, but for a lot of the people around me, kind of that white noise, the static in the background of my life was, why, why don't you get a job? <laughs> Why don't you do something normal like everybody else? Why do you sit there 10, sometimes 12 hours a day studying or being immersed in prayer or meditation? Like, what on earth are you doing with your life? But my vision was clear, and I didn't pay attention. It was the trust in myself and trust in a universe that would support me that allowed me to stay present, focused, and enjoy the process while celebrating the successes. The day came, I was ready to share my message with the world, I was very excited, and I wrote a book, and before I had a chance to actually do anything with it, I got a call for some great big opportunity in another country, far away from where I was, but it would be a lot of money, a lot of respect, 
and the ability for high impact. But it would also mean shelving this new vision. It was like I first had to drop my life's dream for reality and now I had to choose between a new reality and a dream. It also meant that I'd be disappointing my mentors, my family, my friends, all the people that supported me through this process. And now finally an opportunity showed up. Not to mention I didn't want to end up in my boxers watching the Grammys with my mom. <laughs> and this is really an important point. Having a positive perspective doesn't make life easy. Hopeful doesn't mean easy. Life has challenges. Every time you choose your dream, that means somebody else's dream may come to an end. Every time you choose yourself, someone else may be offended, threatened, disappointed. Every time you take a risk, there are going to be moments of uncertainty and fear. And every time a challenge surfaces, well, you may question your hope, your belief. You question God, your humanity. You question your very soul. Life is complex, and life has its challenges. But living with the knowing that you are good and able and that a universe would support you in that process is a totally different experience when they show up. So getting back to the story, we turned down the job, and yes, it was a major risk. And yes, we disappointed a lot of people. And yes, I had to ask myself, did I do the right thing? And I know it doesn't always happen like this, but six months later, my book was endorsed by Deepak Chopra and became a Wall Street Journal and USA Today bestseller. And today, I get to stand here with you, this beautiful, beautiful people in this room, sharing a message of joy and positivity, love and peace, and in more than just my boxers. <laughs> <laughs> from everything that I've learned and from all of my life's experiences, even though it's a young age, but it's been an eventful life so far. I know without question that this is true, and for me, my life is the evidence. But way more important than that is, I implore you, I want you to go out and be the evidence for you in your life. You can change the way you see the world. You can change the way you relate to yourself. And you can see a universe that is positive and good, that is loving and a self that is powerful and good. Belief is a choice. It's the most important choice of our life. What I want to leave you with is a formula for happiness, four questions you can ask yourself. And I can guarantee you that if you can answer yes to these questions, you're going to live a happy life. One, do you feel that you are good? That means regardless of how you perform, regardless of the things you've done in the past or how the judgments of others, do you feel that you're good? If you would say generally no, that would mean, no, I don't inherently feel that I am good and I care about what other people think more than I care about myself. I'm probably a perfectionist and my job title and what I own make me feel important and special and if I don't have that, I feel like a failure. But if you can answer yes, what that means is I feel that I'm inherently good even when I make mistakes, even when things go wrong, no matter who I'm with or what I do. I can be confident in myself, I love myself, and I have fun in my life. Second question, do you feel that you have the power to create the life you want to live? Generally, yes is one life, Generally, no is another life, and maybe the answer is sometimes. These first two questions help us understand the first condition, which is, what do I think about myself? How do I view myself? What is my self-belief? Am I good? Am I able? Third question, do you feel that the universe is good? Do you feel that at its core, at, at the very essence of life, is the universe a good place? If the answer is no, I feel like the universe is out to get me. Yeah? It's inherently problematic, chaotic, and in disorder. But if I can answer yes, what I'm really saying is the universe is inherently good, loving, meaningful, intentional, and divine. 
That means that even when something that happens that's bad, there's a purpose for it, which makes it ultimately good. And four, do you feel the universe will support you in your desire to create in your life? And a no to that means you feel alone in the universe. You're just a speck of dust, and no one's here to help you. But to say yes would mean to say that you feel like there is an inherent divinity to life, and that there is support helping, guiding, directing you in everything that happens going forward, helping you achieve the reason for your being. Belief is a choice. And you get to make that choice every single day. And if you find you don't like where you are on the answer to these questions, educate yourself. Find people who do live that way and learn from them, the way that I did. And the more you learn, the more you grow, and the happier you are. I really want you to be happy. I really want you to enjoy your life. But more than anything, I want that happiness to translate into a meaningful life. A meaningful life that has ripple effects on everyone you know. A meaningful life that uplifts the entire world. Thank you very much.